In this module, we will look at the estimation of the confidence interval for single mean when the population standard deviation is unknown, which is mostly the case. If an estimate of the population standard deviation S cannot be developed prior to the sampling, we use the sample standard deviation S to estimate sigma. This is the sigma unknown case. In this case, the interval estimate of mu is based on the T distribution. We'll assume for now that the population is normally distributed. Hence, the interval estimate when sigma is unknown will be given as x bar, which is a point estimate, plus minus t alpha by 2, which is a reliability coefficient, and s divided by under root n, which is the standard error of x bar. Hence, in this one, 1 minus alpha will be the confidence coefficient, t alpha by 2 will be the t value providing an area of alpha by 2 in the upper tail of the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and s will be the sample standard deviation. Let's take an example where a researcher studied the effectiveness of early weight bearing and ankle mobilization therapies following acute repair of a ruptured Achilles tendon. One of the variables they measured following treatment was isometric gastroxylus muscle strength. In 19 subjects, the mean isometric strength for the operating limb in Newton was 250.8 with a standard deviation of 130.9. We assume that 19 patients constitute a random sample from a population of similar subjects and we wish to use these sample data to estimate for the population mean isometric strength after surgery. We may use the sample mean 250.8 as point estimate of the population mean. Because the population standard deviation is unknown, we must assume that the population values to be at least approximately normally distributed before constructing a, constructing a confidence interval for population mean. Let us assume that such an assumption is reasonable. We have our estimator for population mean, that is mu x bar equals to mu, and our standard errors is s over under root n, which is equals to 130.9, which is the standard deviation from sample divided by square root of 19, which is 19 is n. Hence, the standard error of mean is 30.0305. We need to find the reliability coefficient, which will be a value of t distribution with a confidence coefficient of 0 0.95, having degrees of freedom to be n minus 1 equals to 18, which turn out to be 2.101 at 5% alpha and 18 degrees of freedom. Hence the 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for the population mean with unknown population standard deviation sigma can be obtained as 250.8, which is point estimate of mean, plus minus 2.101, which is the reliability coefficient, and 30.0305 is a standard error. Hence, the interval we got is 187.7 to 313.9. This interval may be interpreted from both the probabilistic and practical point of view, which says that we are 95% confident that the true population mean mu is somewhere between 187.7 and 313.9. In repeated sampling, 95% of the interval constructed in, in like manner will include the population mean. Here we emphasize that a requirement for the st strictly valid use of the t-distribution is that the sample must be drawn from a normal distribution. Experience has shown, however, that moderate departures from the requirement can be tolerated. As a consequence, the t-distribution is used even when it is known that the parent population deviates somewhat from normality. Most researchers require that an assumption of at least a mound-shaped population distribution be tenable. When the sample size is large, greater than 30, it does not make much difference if we use z-score or t-score to compute the critical value. Both approaches will yield similar results, but t-distribution will get us the better results. Thank you.